Good morning, Camp Quarantine Cub Scouts. I hope everything's going well. I hope you got a good night's sleep and I hope you're ready to have a great time here at Camp Quarantine 2020. It should be a great day, lots of activities, lots of different things to do, lots of new ideas to learn, and a couple of things to take with you. So today, I'm going to be talking to you about the history of Cub Scouts. Now, the history of Cub Scouts is really, really interesting. Some stuff has changed a lot. Other things haven't changed at all. It depends on what you're looking at. So if you like history, if you like learning, this will be a great time for you to know a little bit more about what Cub Scouting is all like. I was a Cub Scout once upon a time, and I remember I had lots and lots of fun. And I'm sure that you guys are also having lots of fun as well, earning pins, earning badges, earning all sorts of different things. So let's talk about what Cub Scouts is all about. So to begin with, we need to go back in time a little bit. So there's somebody that I would like you to meet. So here is that person. So this individual right here, his name is Lord baden Pole, And this guy, he was the founder of the scouting movement. He's the one who started everything. He is the one who put all of these ideas together that has become the organization that has been around for well over 110 years now. And he's the guy who came up with the idea of Cub Scouts as well. Lord Baden Pole, he was really a kid at heart. And so that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to come up with all sorts of ideas of what people could do in order to kind of relive their childhood and to have fun and be in the outdoors and, and learn new skills and different things like that. So he created the scouting program. 1907 over in England, he creates Boy Scouts. And then a little later on, about 10 years later, he decided to create what was called cubbing. And he decided to call it cubbing because that's what the younger animals were called. They were called cubs. And so he decided that he was going to use the idea of animals and stories that he had heard in order to make this new program for the younger brothers of all of the kids who had now become Boy Scouts. So the reason that he decided to use the idea of cubbing and why he decided to use animals was because of this guy right here. His name is Rudyard Kipling. Rudyard Kipling and Baden Pole met while they were in India, a long way away from here. And so both of them were in the military and Rudyard Kipling also was an author. He liked to write books. And so Baden Pole and Kipling talked about some ideas and using some of the ideas from some of Kipling's books to put together this program for younger boys. And so Kipling said, absolutely, please do. And from there, Baden Pole decided to use the story of the Jungle Book. Now, how many of you have heard of the Jungle Book before? Okay, a couple of you. Good, excellent. So you may not be quite familiar with this particular version of the Jungle Book, but I bet you're probably more familiar with this version of the Jungle Book, right? Exactly, yeah. Look for the bare necessities, those good old bare necessities. So the Jungle Book is the story of people like Baloo and Mowgli and Shere Khan. 
And so what Baden Pohl did is he decided that he was going to take that story of the Jungle Book and he was going to use that to create cubbing. Why not? It was a great idea. And so because of the characters that we see in the Jungle Book, we see Mowgli, who's the young boy. We see Blue the bear. We see Akela, who is going to be the, the great wolf. We see all of these different characters. So Baden Pohl used those characters to create this program to get younger kids involved in the outdoors. Great idea. So that's over in England. When does it come here? So the idea behind cubbing came over to the United States pretty quickly. But the program itself, what we are doing today, didn't actually start right away. There was this one gentleman. His name was James West. And James West, he was the man in charge. And he wasn't really sure whether or not if cubbing for younger kids was a really good idea. Boy Scouts, that was great, but uh, I don't, he wasn't quite sure about the younger group. So it took some convincing, but by 1930, so a little while ago, by 1930, cubbing was in place. And again, we're looking at some similarities between what we have now and what was there in the beginning. So a little quiz here. So what is the motto of Cub Scouts? That's right, exactly. Do your best. And that, boys and girls, has not changed. It has been do your best from the very beginning. Baden Pohl thought that. And when the coming idea came to the United States, it stuck. So do your best continues to be the motto even to this day. So that's one thing that hasn't changed. The stories behind all of the different people that are talked about also, for the most part, hasn't changed. Another thing is rank. So along the way in the United States, we came up with ranks, okay? So today, what is the first rank or the first badge that you earn as a Cub Scout? Okay, right, the first badge that you earn is your bobcat badge unless you're a lion now but there's a whole nother story about lions so you can earn your lion now and then after you earn lion then what is the first thing you earn you earn bobcat and so when cub scouting started there was the bobcat and the bobcat was a scout was a cubber who had the right to wear the uniform and then after you had your bobcat, then you could start earning rank. But if you have your bobcat, show me your bobcat. Okay, so it's that triangle patch, that diamond patch, excuse me, and it has a picture of a bobcat on it. Excellent. Very good. Looks like mine when I was a Cub Scout. But at one point, you didn't get a patch. So as I said, in the very beginning, you got to wear the uniform and that showed that you were a bobcat. Okay. Then it eventually became your first badge. And so this is what you got to wear. You got to wear this special pin on your uniform that says, Bobcat. That's 
what people were able to wear was this pin. So it wasn't even a patch like it is today. It was a pin that you could put on your uniform and wear with pride that you had fulfilled the necessary requirements. Okay, so we've got that. So moving on, what are the ranks for Cub Scouts? So today we have lions and then you get your bobcat and then you have wolf, bear, weeblo, and then arrow of light. Very good, excellent. Well, most of those have been around, but not all in the same order and not all the time. Now, where do you get your information for what you're supposed to do? Where, where do you keep track of everything that you've done and all of the requirements that you've completed and so on? Exactly, exactly, in your handbook. And do you have your handbook with you? Well, that's okay if you don't have your handbook with you. I know what it looks like. You usually, the big book spiral bound and it's got pictures of wolf and a bear and, and so on on the cover of it. So keep that with you. It's handy. You learn a lot of stuff. So our Cub Scout handbooks today, they're big books. You can drop it and you can hurt yourself. Well, they weren't always big because People weren't 100% you know, sure what we were supposed to do. So this is the first Cub Scout handbook. As you can see, it says the boys cub book. Down here, it says Cubs BSA. So this is the first handbook. Not very thick, but there's a lot of stories, there's a lot of information in here about what they thought Cub Scouts should do. So what are some of the things that you think Cub Scouts should do? Okay, play games, good. Go outside, excellent. Okay. Now, you said also learn the Cub Scout oath. Now, in this book, there isn't a Cub Scout oath yet. Eventually it comes along. Now, Cub Scout Oath, that's something that has changed. Cub Scout Oath, okay, so repeat the Cub Scout Oath with me, okay. Uh, Scout Salute, okay, and on my honor, I will do my best to do, now, no, hold, hold on, hold on. Now, what we say today is not what it originally said. The original Cub Scout Oath goes something like this. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to be square and to obey the law of the pack. Square? I'm tall look like a person, but I, I, I'm not square. Well, what they were saying about being square was being responsible, being a good scout. Eventually, what that changed to when I was a Cub Scout was, I promised to do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to help other people at all times, and to obey the law of the pack. So that was another version of Cub Scout what we call the Cub Scout Promise. Today, we do, on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. A lot more words now, but we all say the same thing, whether we're Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, adventuring, so on. So things, things are a little bit different, but some of the words that we say are still all the same. So I showed you that really, really old Cub Scout handbook. So like I told you, some of the handbooks have changed. They didn't, but some things haven't. So 
this this is an old wolf book okay what's on the cover of it there's the wolf just like we have now this is my wolf book when i was a cub scout okay as a picture of the badge it's got a wolf print down there okay so a little a little bit the same and then bear okay there's the bear book there's my bear book still have bears on the front of it you know he looks like a regular bear he looks like a scout but still the bear book so what comes next after bear what was that are you sure? I, I heard you say we blow. I, I don't I don't think that's right. Lion. Lion. Now, how many lion scouts do we have out there? Okay, good. We have a couple. So, the lion, the lion scout. This used to be the rank that was in place of what we would now consider the Weeblos badge. It was called the Lion. And then when you became a Weeblo, that meant that you were working on your arrow of light. So older Cub Scout uniforms used to have wolf, bear, and then lion. And then you earned your arrow of light. But I know some of you are asking, but that, how is that possible? Because, you know, that, that's not exactly how things work now, is it? No, it's not. Now the lions, they're the youngest ones. They're, they're the kindergartners. Well, even it didn't stick around. I was not a lion scout. That didn't exist when I was in Cub Scouts, but it did. And it had its own badge. And it looked like a lion. Makes sense, doesn't it? So that was the difference. And then after you earned your lion badge, you earned your weeblo, which was what we would call today arrow of light. And there's a, you know, you have to understand. So when it comes to weeblo, what does this mean? Even back in 1930, this is one of those things that hasn't changed. The idea of what a weeblo was, was that we'll be loyal scouts. We'll be loyal scouts. Same thing today. The other thing you need to keep in mind, okay, W for wolf, right, B for bear, exactly, L, that's right, lion, and so that means that the S stands for scout. So W, B, L, and S also stood for the different ranks that you would get over time. So wolf, bear, lion, and then you become a scout. So how's that sound so far? Really interesting, huh? Excellent. So next thing, one of the most important things about being a Cub Scout is the uniform. That's how we tell that we're a Cub Scout or that we're a Boy Scout or that we're a leader or that we're involved in something is because of our uniform. So I'm an adult, so I have a tan uniform. Some of you, I think are, if I see correctly, some of you are wearing tan uniforms. That's because now you're a Weeblo or an Arrow of Light Scout, right? Okay, so the rest of you, what color are you wearing? Exactly blue and blue boys and girls scouts and scouters 
that has been the traditional Cub Scout color is blue. Now, this particular uniform is a little old. It's in my collection and it's from about the 1960s. As you can see, it says over here, it tells you that it, this particular pack was in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. That's where I'm from. Okay. We've got our neckerchief and our slide here, just like we do today. Okay. And here you can see it says Cub Scouts. Now, what does yours say? Does yours say Cub Scouts? No, it doesn't. But it used to. It used to say Cub Scouts BSA. Okay. So let me show you something else. Okay. Look at that. See, those are the patches that we were talking about. So when we look at this, here we have the first one. There we have the wolf badge. Okay. Then we can see that we have Got lost here. There's the bear. Okay. And look, there's the lion. Now, what are all these other things here? Well, those are what used to be called arrow points. We don't use those really anymore, but they used to be for other skills that you learned. You could get a certain number of arrow points over time. So, this is an old uniform. You can see here they got uh, they got a patch all those patches and then over here okay this is when cub scouts uh, for the jubilee so scouting in the united states was turning 50 so that's why it's from 1960 and also look at this hey weeblos air of light look still have the colors and pins now these pins are a little different than what you earn today. Not so different from what I used to earn, uh, but these were similar to the pins that you are earning now. Okay, so we've gone over some of the history. We've talked about the handbooks. I just showed you one of the old uniforms. So how's it going so far? Good? Okay. So there's one other thing that I really would like to talk to you guys about because I think it's the most important thing when it comes to being a Cub Scout. You know what that is? The most important thing about being part of Cub Scouting? That's right. The Pinewood Derby. Now, how many of you have participated in a Pinewood Derby? That is like the most important thing when it comes to Cub Scouts, okay, is the Pinewood Derby. Everybody looks forward to the Pinewood Derby. All of the going outside and different things like that, that's great. I love doing that stuff, but it really, really is the Pinewood Derby. That is the most important thing. So just wanted to kind of Move this. Oh, there we go. See, there's lion, wolf, or excuse me, tiger, wolf, and bear. Okay. So the Pinewood Derby. The Pinewood Derby is really cool because it's been around for a pretty long time. And somebody came up with the idea of doing this because it, their son couldn't participate in the soapbox derby. So he decided to shrink it. So let's watch this little clip about the Pinewood Derby. It all began in 1953 with a father's dream. A dream for his son. That father was a man named Don Murphy, the father and founder of the first Pinewood Derby. The announcement, Let the Race Begin, was first made to an excited group of boys at the Scout House in Manhattan Beach, California, over 50 years ago. 
Pinewood Derby has become the single most popular and successful event in scouting. The Pinewood Derby is a race where Cub Scouts from age 6 to 10 years old cut, carve, and create a small car made out of pinewood. The cars can weigh no more than 5 ounces and can be no longer than just 7 inches. The original purpose of the Pinewood Derby was to bring the family together in one common interest, and that is still true today. John Murphy's son, Don, sums up the race best in his own words. As I look back on the last 50 years of my life, I can recall several events which stand out as significant and having actually contributed to the man I am today. It often seems amusing to me that many of those past events, which stand out as special to me now, seem ordinary and of little importance at the time they actually happened. Such is the case with the Pinewood Derby and my participation in it. The Pinewood Derby has helped me in every town, county, and state in America, and it is truly an American race. Okay, so wasn't that really neat? A little bit of history about the Pinewood Derby. So everybody has a Pinewood Derby car. It's just, it, we have to have one. We've spent all that time working on it. So I wanted to show you one of the older Pinewood Derby cars that I have. Okay, see, look at that. It's got a decal. It says Pinewood Derby on it, number six and everything. So this, this type of Pinewood Derby car, this is an older one. So this was one of my uncles, but it's really cool. And this is what they used to look like, okay? You had to put pieces for the wheels and everything, but they went really really fast and if you've ever watched the movie Down and Derby you know all about it. This type of car was the one that had the world record for Pinewood Derbies and everybody was trying to beat that record. So great event. I know that it's probably the highlight of every single Cub Scout's scouting year is the Pinewood Derby. It is so much fun to make the Pinewood Derby car and you get to do all sorts of cool things with it. So that's another reason why it's so important. So I hope that you've had a really good time in doing everything and listening to this little bit of history about uh, what Cub Scouting is. I have, you know, there are all sorts of books that have been you know, written about Cub Scouting. And, you know, some of this is a little bit more for the, the uh, den leaders and the Cub Masters and so on. But I wanted to just kind of show those to you. Den Mother's Den Book. So this gave the den mother all the information that she needed to know. Den Chief, Cub Scouts, once you have crossed over into Scouts BSA, you can become a den chief, which means that as a scout, you can help the Cub Scouts. You already know everything that they're doing, so now you can help teach them. Weeblo's Den Leader book, the Den Leader's book, more, the Cub Master's pack book, all of this stuff that was there to help the adults. And one last thing, so, Cub Scouts, you get your Bobcat badge and you get your wolf and all and all of these other badges that you get to put on your uniform and so on. They're really, really cool. Adults, well, you don't get to earn any of the badges, but sometimes now you can get training awards and different things like that. And some of those have been around for a while. But I wanted to highlight one award that no longer exists. So if there are any den leaders out there that are considered a long time ago to be den mothers, perhaps you've helped out with training. Perhaps you are involved in Cub Scout roundtables. You have your den, you're the Cub Master, you do lots of work and so on. You're active in your pack, you're active in your 
in your district. Maybe you're also very active on your council level. Today, those adult leaders that are active, they can be presented with something called the Silver Beaver Award. But up until 1971, there was no award that could be presented to a female scouter who was involved in Cub Scouting. So between 1971 and 1974, there was an award specifically created for female scouters for all of the work that they did. And that award was known as the Silver Fawn Award. So the Silver Fawn shows a silver fawn deer suspended from a green and white ribbon. And that award was presented to female scouters between 1971 and 1974. In 1974, everything changed. And at that point, women could be nominated for the Silver Beaver. And it has remained that way ever since. So just another little side note about awards and Cub Scouting and things like that. Well, Cub Scouts, I hope that you had a great time and I hope that you continue to have a great time for the rest of the weekend. Keep on keeping on, keep on doing all the different activities and I wish you all the best as you continue to go forward. So have a great time and I will close with this last slide. Thank you very much for joining us. Remember to share all of your experiences on the Facebook page, hashtag Camp Quarantine 2020. Have a great day, everybody. Have fun. See you later.